So let's say you practice recalls at home or in a less distracting environment, and then let's say you take them to a park or a new environment, and your dog is not coming to you when you call them. They're super distracted. They're not listening to you. This means you need to do two things. First, you need to increase your dog's motivation. So the next time you go to the park, bring higher value treats. Some dogs like cheese, some dogs like meat. You can try different treats to see if they like them more. Also, try not feeding them before you take them to the park. So if you go to the park in the afternoon and you normally feed your dog in the morning, just don't give them that morning meal so your dog will be hungrier when they're at the park. The second thing you need to do is have a leash on them. If your dog's been really reliable at home, but at the park they're not, that means have a tool that you can use to correct them or help them so that they're not practicing ignoring you. A common problem we see is that sometimes when people are recalling their dog, someone else is distracting their dog. Gypsy, come. Gypsy, come. Gypsy, come. Gypsy, come. Gypsy, come. So here in this situation, I'm setting Gypsy up for failure. So it's too much to ask her to disengage from Bridget and come to me. So we're gonna help her learn this. And this next time, as soon as I call her, if Gypsy doesn't disengage from Bridget, then Bridget's going to ignore her. So she's gonna put her hands behind her back. She's gonna completely stop interacting with her completely. Gypsy, come. Gypsy, come. Yes, good girl. Nice job. Gypsy, come. Yes, good girl, nice job, mama. So by doing that, we're teaching her that once you hear come, nothing exciting or fun is gonna happen from that person. All the excitement and rewards are gonna come from me. Remember, we don't want our dogs practicing blowing us off. We don't want them ignoring us. So if you call your dog and somebody else is petting them, and they don't come and then your dog continues to get attention from this other person, they're learning, oh, I don't have to come to you if somebody else is petting me. So make sure that you're not allowing your dog to, to get away with this. Now with puppies, we like to teach what we call an emergency recall. For this, we use puppy, 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 puppy. We call it an emergency recall because we want our dog to be highly responsive to it. We don't only use it in emergency situations, but if we were in an, in an emergency where our dog's running away from us, uh, we would probably use this cue because they're more likely to come to us. The reason that our dogs are highly motivated for this is because we always reward them. So when you use your emergency recall, feed them, reward them 100% of the time. Puppy, 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 puppy. Yes, oh, good job, nice. So we pretty much say it continuously until they start coming and then we mark and reward them. Puppy, 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 yes, good, nice. Don't overuse this command. If you're saying it all the time, your dog's more likely to tune it out. If you're not feeding them every time, they're more likely to tune it out. So use it sparingly. You can randomly say it to them throughout the day, but just remember not to overuse it. And that's it for our beginner recall series. We have another video series called Maintaining a Reliable Recall. That's for more advanced dogs that have been through our e-collar program. So make sure to watch that series if your dog is e-collar conditioned to see how to take your dog's off-leash recall to the next level. 
Thanks for watching, guys.